Hi all, Joe from Engadget, and this is the Sony Z-Series Walkman player. So this little guy was announced back in August. It's been released overseas before, and it's finally making its way onto U.S. shelves. Should be here around the beginning of March, and we've had some time to play around with this to see what we think. So it's really interesting because it's Sony's first Android-powered portable media player, turning Android 2.3.4, and as you can see, it's nearly vanilla. There obviously are a few changes here that make it have Walkman DNA inside of it, but overall, very, very vanilla here. Now, internally, there is a Tegra 2 chipset and one gigahertz of RAM, so it's also a very powerful PMP player. It's not going to match a lot of the higher-end phones that are out right now, but it's certainly enough to handle what this is going to be generally used for. So specifics on the hardware. 4.3-inch screen, WQVJ resolution, 800 by 480, LED backlit. Looks very nice, it's got good colors, good contrast, good crispness, good black levels. Overall, it's a very good display. It's not the best display we've seen, but there's really nothing to complain about. It's nice and looks great. Viewing angles are also wide enough so that you could probably have two people watching this closely seated together without much of a problem. Along with that Tegra 2 chipset we mentioned, there's also Bluetooth 2.1 with EDR in here. There's an accelerometer so that you can play games and tilt the device, which why wouldn't it have that at this point? And there's even an internal microphone, which you can't see. Doesn't even sound that good, so if you're thinking of doing VoIP calls over the Wi-Fi in here, that's 802.11 BGN, might not be the best option. Your power button, on the side you've got a volume rocker, a Walkman W dot control button. When this is hit, it brings up a Walkman widget that'll let you quickly forward and advance your tracks. So you can do it with taps or W control, which is essentially a swipe screen. We found it to be kind of gimmicky, but it is nice to have that option if you want to use it. There's also a micro HDMI output so that you can throw a video to your TV. On the bottom, there's a loophole here for wrist straps, a 22 pin Walkman port. So this goes Walkman to USB with the cable that's included and use this to sync the device. And you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We really like this jack. It's reinforced, bulges out a little bit, but if you pull your cables out of this, it, we pulled a ton out, doesn't crack, doesn't get loose. We really like the build quality on it. Left side, you've got nothing, but you can see that the device has this contour to it. So when you're holding it in landscape mode, it feels really awesome for viewing videos or playing games, which is why we're sort of disappointed that this isn't PlayStation certified. It's powerful enough to run a lot of stuff smoothly, and we'd love to see those titles make their way on here. On the back, you've got some logo, FCC ID, and a reset button, which we didn't have to use normally. And you've got the speakers here, which are good. They're not anything to write home about, but they get the job done. Despite us liking the contours, they chip. So in hand, this really doesn't feel like it's plastic. It feels like a piece of metal, which is awesome. But this is all just a glossy coating and going in and out of our pockets, these bold edges just love to have the paint chip off. So we're sort of confused as to why Sony hasn't rectified this, considering this sort of design ethic is following a few of their other Walkman players. The other thing to note is that if you've got smaller hands, these sides might dig into your palms depending on how you intend to hold the device. 3.4, gingerbread, lightly changed. And those changes you'll see are this Walkman widget right here, which is essentially the same as that W control thing I showed earlier. Sony's preloaded this with a game, Riptide GP. It's got access to their Music Unlimited streaming service and a bunch of Sony original apps in here. There's an FM radio, which I should mention, but it only works if you have headphones plugged in because they'll act as the antenna. It supports DNLNA and you've got Wi-Fi checker thing, a photo viewer, and a video and music player. So let's hop into the music player here because this is what a Walkman's generally about. You've got a ton of options to view your songs. You can go in a list view, you can go by albums, artists, lists. You've got all the options that you would expect. The system comes loaded with a few tracks, which you can see over here, and 
There's also this thing called Sense Me, which is basically like iTunes Genius, and it'll listen to your songs based on 12 tonalities and put them in 12 different categories, like extreme or upbeat for custom playlists based on how it thinks things sound together. The last thing you'll have are cover art view, and this is an interesting sort of Sony view here. It throws your albums as if they're on a table, and you can manipulate them, move them around, twist them, or even throw them to other devices. So if you have a Bravia TV, you can quickly like throw this over to it with a swipe, which is sort of nice. Now, this view is all right. We found that it just sort of makes for a cluttered mess, but the app itself is very smooth, runs really nice, and we just generally like it overall. What's really great about the app though, and this is in the video player app as well, is that you'll have these sound settings. So you've got a five band equalizer, you can make two custom presets if you want to. There's also a clear bass setting, and this will let you jack up the bass without distorting your speakers if you have lower quality speakers. The other thing that's in here is a VB, VPT surround sound. This will let you and give your sound different sort of uh, voicings, as if you were in a studio or in a club or an arena, it just makes it sound like you're in an outdoor or indoor different kind of halls. The other thing that's in here is a sound enhance. If you've got lower quality tracks and the treble when it sounds like it's underwater, this will aim to sort of tighten that up so it doesn't sound so muddy and, distor and distorted harmonically. The clear stereo, this essentially takes your stereo tracks and takes out any of the bleed that might come between the right and left channels into the center channel. There's a normalizer. This makes the tracks between everything the same volume. We didn't really use a lot of those options, but they're nice to have and they definitely all really work. The two that we actually use the most in our day to day were XLoud and ClearPhrase. So these work with the back speakers and XLoud lets you jack the volume up on these a little bit more without distorting. ClearPhrase gives them less of a tinny sound and more of a full sound. It's not to say they sound tinny, but they sound fuller when you enable that. Now these speakers themselves, they're not the best we've ever heard on a device. Again but they work really well and they're very loud. They're good for just watching movies in a pinch or playing video games. But if you're in a loud environment, you're definitely not gonna be able to keep up. Now, using headphones, this thing sounds great. Regardless of if you use cheaper or better headphones, obviously the better they are, the better it's gonna sound. Sony has their S-Master MX amplifier in here, digital amplifier that powers this the sound output, and it sounds really crisp, really full, really vibrant. We liked it a lot. Definitely better than what we've heard with similar players like iPhones and the Samsung Galaxy Player 4.0, which we just really wouldn't recommend in that aspect. Now, despite it sounding so good and having a nice screen, you might be turned off by the fact that it doesn't have cameras, and that's notable because this thing is a little bit more expensive than the 4.0 and the iPod Touch. Now the other thing that's curious about these settings here are that you can only use those within Sony's apps. So if you're a big Google Music user, you're going to find that you're not going to be able to use it. All you get are the normal settings and it can make things very frustrating. That said, it sounds good bland, but if you're looking for that Walkman experience, you're definitely going to want to use this with Music Unlimited and Sony services. If you're not into that, this might not be the device to look into. Now, along the front, there's something interesting here that you may have noticed. You've got three capacitive buttons and they're painted silver. A lot of manufacturers now are going with capacitive ones that are for haptic feedback, which these are capacitive obviously, but or backlit. These are not backlit and they don't offer haptic feedback. So when you're in a dark environment, they're incredibly hard to find. Now, you've if you use Android a lot, you might have muscle memory, but it's something worth note because they can be a little tricky to find at first. So also worth note, this does support Android Market. You can pretty much load this up with anything that you want. It's a shame that no matter what media player you're using though, you might not be able to get those Walkman features. The other thing about the W control that sort of picked us a little bit is that you can't use this button for anything else other than the Walkman player as far as we found. So it's not reassignable, meaning that it's always gonna be stuck to Sony's widgets that are in here. So let's talk about the configurations and the competition and then get to wrapping this up. You've got three choices of this. This is the only color available in the US. Eight gigabytes for $250, 16 gigabytes for $280, and 32 gigabytes for $330. And all that storage is not user expandable. When this one has eight gigabytes on here, we only really got to use about 4.5 gigabytes of the space that was on there. 
So when we talk about the Walkman Z's competition, we're really referring to two devices. That is the iPod Touch and the Android-based Samsung Galaxy Player. So starting with Sammy's Contender, you'll have a choice of a 4 or 5 inch screen, which you don't have with the Sony, although 4.3 inches is nice. And you have expandable storage, although that one does start with 8 gigabytes of internal space. So despite being priced slightly lower at $230, $207, its performance is not as good as this one leaving us to recommend leaving it on the shelf. But when you bring the iPod Touch into the fray to compare against this, the Walkman sort of gets more serious competition and it's something to think about considering this has been unchanged for well over a year now, the iPod Touch that is. And it only starts at $200 for the 8 gigabyte version. It's just a better buy at that point. With all the benefits of iTunes integration, a higher resolution 960 by 640 display, and the dual cameras for photos, filming, video chat. Meanwhile, Extreme Audio Files, on the other hand, can go with something like the Cohen D3, which can offer audio performance that will compete with this, but that stellar audio comes at the expense of heavily skinned Android. So to wrap this up, this thing has left us in a bind of sort, the Z Player. It's got a lot of good in it when you stack it up against a direct competitor like the Galaxy Player 4.0, but it's not without a notable amount of annoyances. The hardware looks and feels great, but then you're left with those palm-pushing edges that love to get scuffed. And the onboard DSP and welcome controls are also great, but they only function if you use Sony's supplied apps for your music. And the list does go on from there. Those are just a few points. So that leaves us here. If you've got to have a moderately powerful Android PMP focused on music listening and you don't mind non-expandable user storage, we'd certainly recommend the Z over Samsung's Galaxy Player. Even if you're not going to use Sony supplied services and sound shaping options, the Z sounds fantastic with other music apps. As far as PMPs in the land of Androids go though, the Z is a powerful option that's sure to please. On the flip side, with the iPod Touch costing $50 less despite its extra features, namely those twin cameras, the Walkman is going to be a hard sell for folks in search of a solid all-purpose media player.